spell effects that actually move on the game table. Yeah, we're doing that this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there, and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week, I got a whole bunch of really fun and exciting things to mention to you, so let's just jump right in. Number one, Alex over at Tiger Skull RPG designed this awesome looking miniature of me. It's actually amazing how much that face looks just like me. It's a really dynamic figure. I'm really in love with this. And if you want to get your hands on it, you can grab the STL file by joining the Coven tier or higher over on Patreon. You'll be supporting me. You get a whole bunch of really cool perks. So go on and check that out. Now to thank Alex, I want to mention his new Kickstarter that launched November 28th called Relics of Forgotten Sorcery. I'll mention a little bit more about it later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. So thanks, Alex. All right, next I want to announce a collaboration between my channel and Firelight Fables Candles. I love having candles burning when I'm working on my crafts, when I'm playing D&D, and this collaboration is absolutely awesome. Head on over to Firelight Fables Candles. You're going to get 10% off your entire order. You're going to be helping out Firelight Fables Candles. And in return, I'm going to get a little kickback as well. Just in time for the holidays. And the code is going to last for as long as we're working together. There'll be a link in the description below. TWC10 will get you 10% off your entire order. So make sure to go check them out. All right. I also want to mention to uh, everybody out there that Anycubic has helped sponsor this video by giving me the brand new Anycubic's Photon Mono X6K, which is what I used to print off uh, this model right here, as well as a smaller version that you'll see a little bit later on in the video. All right, if you're ready, let's go grab some supplies and let's get crafting. All right, so I like to kind of get in the mood when I'm crafting with a really good candle. And I thought, what better candle than Ancient Library for another spell effect video? So light that up and we're going to start with a one inch block of XPS foam. If you look close enough, you can see I put a little X on the top of the foam, just trying to find the center. I'm going to poke a hole in that with a clay sculpting tool and then a skewer. The reason I want to know right where the middle is, is because that's where we're going to put the motor for the tornado. And we're just roughly cutting this out. This is the bottom of the block. That little rectangular piece is going to be for the motor. That's the CR2032 battery pack. Roughly cut that out, you know, make it as neat as you can, but again, you're not gonna see the bottom of this uh, once we're done. Now, once we've had that scored out, using the clay sculpting tool, pop the pieces of foam out, and just keep dry fitting it until the motor and the battery pack fit snug. Now, from the top of the foam, we're gonna just indent the motor into that again. This time, you wanna be pretty precise with your cut and it should be fairly easy to cut this out really nice because the bottom's sort of already been hollowed out. Okay, now heading on over to our, our electronics box, I'm gonna grab a switch and I'm gonna solder this right into the, uh, the wires for the CR2032 pack. I know the pack already has an on-off switch but it's gonna be hard to access that once it's embedded into the foam. So this will make things just a little bit easier once the craft is complete. Now for this little motor, there's only two connections on the bottom, obviously the positive and the negative. And don't worry about which way you solder this on there because if you solder them you know, one way versus the other, it's just gonna make the motor spin clockwise versus counterclockwise. So you're not really gonna mess anything up here. It's a very simple, basic soldering. All right, now we're gonna grab this foam right here. This is the second video where I've used this foam. And uh, I don't wanna say I'm starting to like using it, but it's a very light option for foam. And I want to keep this craft as light as possible because all of this weight is gonna have to be spun by that little motor. So just draw on what you like for your design of your tornado with a marker and then using the foot pedal on the Proxon, it's going to make things a lot easier for cutting this out. Short of the high fence from shifting lands, I'd say the foot pedal for the Proxon is probably um, 
If I had to recommend something for it, it would be the foot pedal. It makes things so much easier. All right, now we want to kind of round this off a little bit. Um, just get creative pushing this through on the wire. Don't worry about, you know, being exact. We're going to really score this up here in a minute with a hot wire knife. And now we want to round off the top of the tornado as well. All right, now this is where we need to sell this as a tornado. So using a hot wire knife, we're going to put a bunch of slashes in a downward motion, spinning the tornado as we do it. And we want to make sure that these burn marks touch and they're very close together. You don't want to have any flat burn marks on this because it'll look, you know, flat. You want them all to kind of come to a point. Now for the top, we're going to just cut out a little cone section with the hot wire knife and have a paper towel on hand and ready to remove any excess foam. Make sure not to burn yourself. That'll keep a lot of unwanted fumes out of your workspace. Okay, and now just twisting the tornado. We want to also make sure we get from the inside of this because you're going to be able to access this uh, as a playable feature. So you could put miniatures in the top of this um, when you're playing. Kind of a cool little perk. All right, now what I want to do is we need to make this a little bit more organic. So what we want to do is just start chipping away at this with the X-Acto knife. I use a clay sculpting tool and we want to basically just make a nice big mound out of this block, making sure that we don't cut all the way through to expose the uh, motor or the CR2032 battery pack. Now placing a little piece of parchment paper between the electronic uh, motor and the CR2032 battery pack slide that in there and then we can add some hot glue to help hold all of this in place. The reason we have that paper in there is because we want the battery pack to be removable obviously to pull the battery out and change it down the road. Placing this right back on top of some parchment paper it will allow to cool it a lot faster and have a nice flat bottom to that once we're done. All right, now this is gonna be how we're going to attach the tornado to the motor. We're gonna use a thick barbecue skewer and we're gonna place that inside a straw. Now you can see there's about a half an inch of space. We need that space at the bottom of the straw so that we can glue this to the motor once we're done. So placing some hot glue onto the skewer, we're gonna twist this as we push it into the uh, straw here. That way, uh, you know, we make sure to get hot glue over the whole thing and it holds together real nice. Now I have uh, really cool fingers, so just be careful. Don't burn yourself right here. Let that cool and shave that hot glue off um, once it's done. Now taking some tacky glue, we're going to use that, if you work fast enough, as a bit of a lubricant to get this right up into the bottom of the tornado. And I've pre-tapped that hole. The tacky glue definitely does help to get it in place. Now grabbing the other end of the skewer, we're gonna use that to kind of just set this to the right depth. You wanna bury that straw so that it is flush with the bottom of the tornado. All right, now we're on to Mod Podge. And I just wanted to show this. I've Mod Podged the tornado and everything else already. But sometimes you don't even need to use a brush. These are all the little uh, stones that I made for it. And uh, just rolling it around in your fingers is a lot faster than even using the brush. So, you know, get creative. Now the color scheme for this is very simple. I'm using an apple barrel, pewter gray and black. Mixing that together for the base coat of the tornado. And then I'm using a lighter uh, gray that I'm gonna just kind of dry brush over the whole thing and wet blend as well. You can see all the different colors there on my palette. And once we have that squared away, we're gonna add a wash and then we're ready to print off some awesome uh, stuff on our new Photon Mono X 6K. 
All right, so I want to take just a second to thank Anycubic for sending me the Photon Mono X 6K. This thing is an absolute beast. Now you've seen me use the Photon Mono previously on the channel on quite a few videos, and one of the noticeable differences between these two things right out the gate is the build plate size. This is an absolute monster. And it's really awesome because I needed to print a whole bunch of things for this video, and that build plate was perfect and could handle it all real nice. Now, the interface between the Photon Mono and the Mono X 6K, pretty much the same. If you're familiar with the Photon Mono, you're going to jump right into this one with no problem. Now, Tiger Skull RPG made an awesome miniature of myself. We're going to be using it here in the video. But I also wanted to make uh, a larger copy of this just for myself to have it on the shelf. And perfect timing. I don't know if you can tell. Look at the size difference between those two. I'm going to pull it off here in a minute and show it to you. But uh, the build plate on this is totally awesome. I was able to print a huge version of this triangular base and the miniature on that, which would not have fit on the Photon Mono's uh, plate there. So let's pull that off here in just a second, and I'll show you what we're working with. All right, so this is the perfect time to, to thank Alex over at Tiger Skull RPG for designing what I think is an absolutely awesome miniature of myself. Uh, so Alex, thank you for that. And uh, you can gain access to this miniature by joining me over on Patreon at The Coven Tier or higher. It comes with that tier along with a whole bunch of other perks, so make sure to check that out. And here you can see the quality of the uh, that file printed out on the Photon Mono X 6K. Totally awesome. Very happy with uh, the way that came out. Now, while I'm talking about Alex, why don't you head on over to his Kickstarter, Relics of Forgotten Sorcery. This is an awesome Kickstarter Alex has been working on for quite a while. It comes with 54 cards in a metal tin, and there are unlocks for this Kickstarter, which include tokens and some STL files of all the items in this deck. So if you want to show him some support, I'd really appreciate it. He's worked really hard on this, and helping to support him is going to unlock all this other stuff, including these awesome STL files for you to download. All right, now this is another miniature that Alex actually designed for me, and I used it in my Fireball Diorama video. Made use of it again. Absolutely perfect miniature for this build. This miniature is an ogre, and if you look at it, it looks like the thing is being whipped around this tornado like it was made for it. So just happened to work out that way, and really is one of my favorite parts of this whole build. All right, next we're going to add some, this is Juniper Branch. Uh, we're gonna add a couple of these around the whole thing, some leaves, and I'm just gonna hot glue them right into place. Now here are the boulders that I made, and you wanna get you know, creative with these. So not just gluing one rock around the whole thing, stacking them, kind of gives it the illusion that they've busted out of the ground and this tornado sucking up a whole bunch of rocks into it. Okay, now this is where you need to be very careful and precise. Don't place hot glue right to the top of the straw because you're gonna see my little problem right here. It's obviously gonna push out on the motor. Leave about maybe, I'd say an eighth of an inch from the top of the straw, then place the motor into the straw and keep it so there's about maybe a 30 second to maybe a 16th of an inch or so from uh, them touching. All right, now we can go and add a little bit of World War Scenics glue to the tornado, and then we're gonna sprinkle on some leaves from Green Stuff World. Got some brown and some green ones, and this is really gonna help kind of like dirty up the tornado and make it a lot more believable because this would be pulling up all kinds of dirt and debris. Next, we hot glue a little bit of polyfill from a pillow onto this. I've spray painted it black. I didn't go real heavy. I want it to look kind of dusty. Uh, so I just went with a light spray of some black on there. And be real careful that you don't get this at the base of the tornado because it will try and suck it up underneath. So make sure that's away from the tornado uh, before you turn it on. Now using a flight peg, we can stick that into the base of some of these boulders, place them around the tornado, 
and it's gonna look like the tornado is powerful and breaking up the ground and sucking these boulders right up into it. All right, so I'm really enjoying this spell series. It's really becoming a little bit of a challenge and I'm enjoying every second of it. So leave a comment down below and let me know what you'd like to see for the next spell effect video. Don't forget also to head on over to Kickstarter and check out Relics of Forgotten Sorcery, Alex's new Kickstarter that he just launched over there, as well as checking out Firelight Fables Candles. You can support me, you can support them. You get something really awesome in return. And Casey just released a brand new Adventures collection. It's 10 class inspired scents. So check them out. I want to thank Any Cubic for sending along their new printer, which helped print off this awesome looking model that Alex designed for me. You can grab this by supporting me over on Patreon on the Coven tier or higher. And also support me by liking the video, leave a comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you around.